Welcome back to my very first Let's Play of Siberia GOG version. We are still in Arrowbud and uh, we are about to try and bring out the valet to bring Helena back inside. And we'll get right on top of that. But first, if you are enjoying the channel or this game, I would love it if you hit those like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Uh, need to uh, bring out the trusty automaton and Ah, wait, 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 wait. Let me guess. We could pick this up because we can use this someplace else. Still wondering about why there's no water. That's a little weird. Here we go. Now then. One more time. All right. Maybe we need to talk to him. He didn't really want to go outside after all. Mask off. Just to be civil. Okay. Good sir, did you not hear us? James, what are you waiting for? Don't tell me you didn't hear the bell this time. The bell did indeed ring, but it is very windy outside, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is a bit gusty. But what's that got to do with it? Madam doesn't understand. She says an automaton doesn't need protection, but my insides don't like the salty wind. I'm afraid to go out, you know. And if you wore my mask to protect you against the salt, would that help? Oh, most certainly. Katie Pooh. So, have you met her yet? This Helena person. What would she like? Does she remember Frank? Hi, Mom. Yeah, sure. I met her, and yes, yeah, she's living in Arrowbad. You can thank Frank for me again. I'll remember too, honey. So, what's Arrowbad like? Maybe Frank can take me there one day. It's this seaside resort, Ma, but it isn't what it used to be. You'd be real disappointed. Maybe you're right. So, when are you coming home? Is that mission all over then? Not really, Ma. I still haven't found the air I'm looking for to wrap up the case. Helena Romanski's a kind of detour here. Listen, Munchkin, I get the distinct impression that you're being led up the garden path. Why don't you just come home, tell your boss this air just doesn't exist, that you've done all you can, et voila. Do you want me to call him for you? Ma, please, don't get involved. Looking for Hans Varlberg is what I'm being paid for, but I also just want to find him for myself. Honestly, you're just as stubborn as your father. Don't complain that your mother didn't warn you. Don't worry, I won't. Oh, that's nifty. Okay, can we talk to you now? 
It's a real honor to meet you, Madame Romansky. People have told me so much about you. Mm. People still talk about me. Oh, dear. Of course. Everyone tells me how wonderful you were. How you were one of the greatest singers of the century. Ah, so I was, my dear. But surely you didn't come here just to dig up the past. Well, now you mention it. Like I said, I'm a lawyer, and to tell you the truth, I don't know much about classical music. But after talking to Mr. Borodin and Mr. Malkovich, they really made me want to hear you. Oh, you are too late, my child. Ten years too late. And how is dear Frank? Do tell me. Oh, I am still angry with him for leaving like that to America. Don't be offended, but I never suspected those cowboys actually have an ear for real music. I don't think he sings much anymore. The odd gala, the odd charity event. Anyway, he sends his love. Oh, his love? <laughs> Do you hear that, James? There is someone who still loves me on the other side of the Atlantic. I never said they didn't, madam. What about this other gentleman? What is his name? Borodin? Do I know him? Yes. You once sang in Comcalsgrad. An incredible recital, if the director's account is anything to go by. If you only knew how moved he still is. He's another one who still adores you. I must confess that seeing one of my greatest admirers once more would do wonders for me, but... Ah, oh, my voice. It is so... Ah, I couldn't. Okay, that sounds very, very, very bad. I'm wrapped up in a case at the moment, and because of it I met a certain Mr. Sergei Borodin, director of the Komkalsgrad Industrial Complex, situated to the northeast of here. Ah, oh, I remember that factory. <gasps> oh, a sad city indeed. <laughs> what am I saying? They all were. Madame Romansky, this Borodin is one of your biggest fans. If you could come and sing for him there, it would make one of his biggest dreams come true. Sing? Oh, my poor girl. I have not sung for years. Time has taken its toll. My voice is like the rest of me. <sighs> Faded and wan, like my heart. Oh. Aren't you going a bit far there? I bet you've still got a great voice. Oh, you are the sweetest cherry, my dear. I am not senile yet, but I look reality in the face every time I look in the mirror. And I can tell you, singing is something I did in the past. We have ourselves a bit of a problem here, then, don't we? Madam Romansky. Please understand, I would never have come so far to disturb you if I didn't really need your help. I understand, my dear. But my health is failing me, as does my voice. Believe me, no one is sadder than I. All right. All right. Strange. I get the impression that Hans Vorlberg turned up here, too. You know Hans Vorlberg? Not exactly. I'm looking for him to sort out this inheritance case, but I've had to snoop around in his past a bit to get on his trail, and I guess he's kind of a close friend now. You knew him, didn't you? Oh, yes. I knew Hans Wollerberg. Do you hear, James? Ah, oh, if you had had the chance to meet Hans. My Hans. Oh, my God. What has become of him? Where is he? As questions go, madam, that one is not without certain complications. I'm sorry, but I have no idea. That's the goal of my mission, to find Hans Varlberg. That's why I have to get back to my train as quickly as possible and to get out of Komkalsgrad. And you cannot find him without the train? The train is one of his last inventions. So is Oscar, the automaton engineer. I get the feeling that the two of them are going to lead me to him. Did you hear that, James? I might see Hans again. I have dreamed so long of meeting my dearest sweetheart again. Oh, if only I could sing. If only I were in Paris, 
I would ask George for that miracle cocktail. The one that only he knew how to make. Wouldn't I, James? Yes, madam. As you have frequently said, without that famous cocktail, your French tour would have probably been cancelled. I don't understand. An extraordinary tale, my dear. It was December, and it was terribly cold and damp. I had to play the role of Tatiana that evening at the opera. But since the morning, I had lost my voice. It drove me completely mad with worry. I don't know how George, the barman at the Moritz Hotel, heard about my affliction, but he brought me up a cocktail that he had invented. A strange concoction. But it turned out to be a miracle cure. My voice returned to me in an instant. That's amazing. That's just what we need. We're going to mix you up a cocktail. Ah, oh, my dear child. It is impossible. George never told me the recipe of the drink. He loved to keep his trade secrets. He said it made him absolutely irreplaceable. <laughs> well, I'm going to get George to tell me. He hasn't yet met with my powers of persuasion. Well, her powers are pretty good. I mean, I like Kate quite a bit, but she... She has a way with people being a little bit... Manipulative, you know? Also, we got a, a bunch of hints there, so we need to uh, call this guy in Paris. And I think we got a number in that brochure, but we'll, we'll ask... Uh, some questions first. Look, please, you absolutely have to come with me to Comicalsgrad. It's the only way I'm going to get my train back and be able to carry on my journey. Your train? That's right. I've been traveling on this amazing locomotive with this automaton engineer. He isn't a million light years away from your James. <laughs> Do you hear that, James? An automaton? You have a twin brother? How delightful. And I thought I was the only person alive able to put up with such a peculiar butler. Permit me to express my surprise, madam. Surely the fact that I remain in your service guarantees my uniqueness. Oscar isn't my butler, though. He has a great independence of thought. Sometimes he does whatever suits him. Just like you, James. Isn't that funny? Madam, we'll not be surprised to hear that she is strongly advised not to undertake a journey that, unless I am very much mistaken, will tire her needlessly. James, only one of us will make that decision, and that person is me. I am very curious to meet your automaton, my dear. Where is it? He had to stay with the train in Comcalsgrad. The director used his hands for the final touches on his pianist. It's the same pianist that will accompany you when you sing. How quaint. Another automaton. And this one can he even play along with me? Play for me? Ah, why does my voice abandon me so now? Yes, let's, let's get on top of that. You must have had a fantastic life. So exhilarating. Ah, much more than you could ever imagine. I used to sing the finest melodies of the moment in the most fantastic theatres around the world. I have been hailed by kings and courted by princes. Grown men would sink to their knees when they heard the first notes of my recital. My voice could break crystal glass and hearts, many hearts. I'm not surprised. Then one day sickness steals away the gift life has given you. My voice started to betray me. I started to get migraines. My health failed. They sent me here to let this spa town weave its healing spell. I was only going to rest for a month, but then the month became a year and the years get longer. But you look so healthy to me. Oh, thank you, my dear. All right. We have done what we can here. I'll let you get a bit of rest. Thank you for listening to me. It was a real pleasure, my child. You are a charming young lady, and simply talking to you has warmed my soul. All right, we know what to do. Um, well. 
eventually we know what to do. But first, I have to take a little bit of a look on this... Uh, what was it? This one? 46433643 That's the one. Okay. No, no. Here we go. What if four six four three three six four three? Hello, Hotel Moritz? The reception here, can I help you? I'd like to talk to Mr. George. He's a barman at your hotel. I'll connect you with the bar. Just a moment. Nice. Hello, Hotel Bar? Hi, I'd like to talk to George, please. George? You mean Mr. George? Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, he must have been a barman at the Moritz in the 50s. Well, don't want to disappoint you, but Mr. George stopped working here quite a while ago. What was it about? I've been told that Mr. George had a recipe for a fantastic cocktail, and only he knew the ingredients. I absolutely must know what was in it. It's a matter of life and death. I'd love to help you, ma'am, but you see, old George, now he knew a lot of cocktails. One hell of a barman and one hell of a reputation. He did write down his recipes before he left, but if you can tell me which one you were looking for exactly... Uh, I don't know. There are a lot of them, you say? Yeah. The Paris Peking Shuffle, the Deep Green Secret, Boco Poco, Blue Helena, Red Mambo... Helena! Yeah, that's the one. The Blue Helena. Right, I'll take a look. Blue Helena, you say. Let's see. One measure of vodka, one measure of blue carasso, one measure of honey, a dash of lime and ice cubes. Shake it all together and Bob's your uncle. Perfect. Thank you very much, sir. You have been most helpful to me. Okay. Progress. Can we? Wasn't this a bar? I mean, it looks like a bar. Um... White wine, red wine, champagne, creme de menthe, blue curacao, port tequila, vermouth, gin, schnapps, cognac, whiskey, vodka, and rum. Oh, I see. So what we need is the vodka. Um. Is that? Yeah. Oh, how cool! But that's, yeah. Oh, my God! Oh. From what backwater of hell did you find this potion? Are you trying to poison me? It's a... Uh, uh, a blue Helena. That is impossible. The blue Helena had a color that was like um, and uh, an aroma like... Um, you understand? Its texture was not quite so... Um, one thing is for certain. This is no blue Helena. Make an effort, my child. Right. I guess I'll try out another mix. I was just... I actually didn't think we were making a drink. I was just trying to figure out the bar. Uh, also, we... Uh... Oh, wait, wait, wait. What's this? Oh. Lemon. What did we just pick up? We pick up um, a crystallized honey and lemon. Right. Now. OK. 
Okay, so we need to lemon. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, let's see, what's the vodka? That's milk, lemon, not sure what that is. And that's the make the drink thingy. Let's try this again. Um, guessing this is the, this might be the power button. So turn it on. Um, oh, okay, okay. Can we? Where do we? Nice. Okay, now that was the vodka, which we need. Okay, we need to use the honey as well. That doesn't look right. Crystallized honey. That, mm, that's not going to work, is it? You know what? I, I reckon it will not. And also, I just remember Well, I could have probably gone the other way as well, but I just remember, no, this is probably the right way. Didn't we turn on some hot Yakuza goodness by these gentlemen? Oh, it's turned off again. No, no, no. Still, still hot. Liquid honey. So, uh, by a stroke of luck, we actually did something before we had to. I'll take it. Okay. Back to the bar. Okay, now then. Liquid honey. So now we have the lemon, we have the vodka, and we have the liquid honey. I think the whole thing is turned on, right? Um, are these keynotes? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think we are onto something here. So, maybe we use the keys for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's it. That's definitely it. Okay, now I just have to remember that we need the, the vodka. Yeah. We need the vodka, so I do need both of them, but that's the second key. Let's just say one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there's both of them seven, indeed. Only thing I'm not 100%. But okay, everything is in place. We need vodka, that's number two. And then we need to do that. And number three, uh, we need some honey so that, oh, that's, oh, that's, maybe this is a honeycomb. So some honey, dash of lime. Some 
ice cubes and uh, uh, this one. My voice. My God, that is atrocious, horrific. It was too good to be true. George's Blue Helena is powerless, ineffective on the voice of an old woman. But your voice is perfect. Don't be so down on yourself. You just need to warm up a bit, that's all. After all these years, it's to be expected. No, no, I am very grateful for all your efforts, but really, I cannot go on stage with such a puny, pathetic voice. My performance would be so poor. I would get such bad reviews. You've just got to get your confidence back, hasn't she, James? I must concur, madam. It sounds to me like your voice is fully restored. James, be quiet. You are a sniveling little creep. Wow. The Blue Helena really does have a magical effect. Your voice is sensational. I am not convinced. If my voice has really returned, it is not ready. It is still not powerful enough. I tell you, you're wrong. The Calm Calls grad director is going to be amazed. My dear, how little you know. I remember a time, madam, when you would test your vocal prowess by breaking crystal tableware and decorations. Ah, those were the days. <laughs> Shards of crystal. I could never do that now. Why, thank you, game. My voice. What have I done? My voice has returned. Did you hear that, James? My voice... My voice has returned. Your voice is still as magnificent as ever, madam. But please don't forget, you're no spring chicken these days. Time has taken its toll. And you are not the toy boy you once were either, James. I hope you have fun on your own. Madam... Leaving you is quite out of the question. Don't be stupid, James. What would you do there? Your place is here. You must prepare my return. Madam, I won't insist. Adventure is not an integral part of my action functionalities. Maybe you're right, madam. As ever. Do I understand correctly that you're going to go with me to Comcallsgrad? You do, my dear. We're going on tour, my dear. Anchors away! I'll go back to the airship to prepare my departure. You can join me there when you're ready. James! Take me to my room. I must prepare. Quick! Quick! What are you waiting for? My fans are waiting for me. Are you sure you're sure about this, madam? Shut up, James, and put your foot on it. Alright, we made a wicked drink, and uh, maybe we should have done one for ourselves as well. We deserve a drink after that, but I think we will have to continue our adventure in the next part. Thank you for following along in my Siberia adventure. Hopefully you are having as much fun as I am. If you are, I would love it if you hit those like and subscribe buttons and if I saw you again in the next part. But for now, it is time to say bye-bye.